the meanest man in town. Well, the story starts with a boy named Robbie Sands. Robbie has a terrible habit of telling lies. And me, oh my, what a terrible habit that is. There was the time, for instance, that Robbie told his mother that he had not taken the cookies from the cookie jar. Why did you lie to me about taking those cookies, Robbie? Why do you tell so many lies? I don't know, Mom. I guess I just can't help it. I think you should go to your room, Robbie, and kneel down by the side of your bed and pray for God to forgive you, and then ask him to help you stop telling so many lies. I'd rather have a whipping, Mom. But whippings don't seem to do you any good, Robbie. And you must stop telling lies. Come, Robbie, let's go to your room. Robbie tried awfully hard, but he just couldn't seem to stop telling lies. Then the Sand family moved into a new town. Robbie helped his mother unpack. Here, son, take these bottles of pills to the bathroom and put them on the stand. Okay, Mom. Clumsy me. Uh-oh, the pills spilled out. Guess I'd better put them back in the bottles. Which bottles do they go in? I'll put them in this one. It's the emptiest. I'd better hurry before Mom finds out I still it. Robbie, the pills in this bottle, do you know what happened to them? No, Mom. Why? Well, I, I thought I was about out of them, and now there's almost a whole bottle full. Are you sure you know nothing about it, Robbie? I'd tell you, Mom, if I did. I wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Well, I, I didn't think you would. I guess I must have been mistaken about being out of them. <sighs> Dad, something's happened to Mom. What, son? She fell down on the floor. Be right there. Mom, what's the matter, Mom? Answer me, Mom. What's wrong here? <sighs> oh, Lucy. Lucy! Robbie, telephone Dr. Hermeshaw. Ask him to hurry. Your wife's heart, Mr. Sands, has slowed down to almost nothing. Acts as if she'd taken an overdose of digitalis or some other heart stimulant. Digitalis? Well, that's funny. Only this noon I was looking for those digitalis pills and couldn't find them. And I know we had some. Is it possible she took them? An overdose? Oh, no, no, certainly not. She has no reason to do such I mean, could she have taken them accidentally? Well, I don't see how. They were in a bottle plainly marked as poison. Is Mom very sick, Dad? She's seriously ill, son. Will she get well? Oh, I think so. Won't she, Doctor? If we knew exactly what happened, she might have a fighting chance. We'd know what to do for her. I think I know. You know what? Yesterday, when Mom asked me to take the pills into the bathroom, I stumbled and fell and spilled the pills from some of the bottles. Which bottle, son? A small bottle uh, and a bigger one. Let's have a look at those bottles. Come on, son. Show them to us. This is the bigger bottle, Dad. You put all of the pills you spilled back in this bottle? Yes, sir. Oh, where's the little bottle? It didn't have any pills in it, so I threw it away. Let me see that bottle. Here you are, Doctor. Tin tablets. Your wife had had bad blood, Mr. Sands? Why, oh, an occasional boil, yes. The dosage for boils is eight tablets a day. If she took eight digitalis pills instead of these... Hmm. I think we can pull her through, though. Now that we know what happened, I'll get busy right away. Son, why didn't you tell your mother about spilling the pills? I was afraid she'd whip me. Do you realize that if she dies, it will be your fault? Is Mom going to die? Let's hope not, son. Dad, it is my fault. I lied to Mom. You lied to her? 
About what? She asked me about the pills. I lied and told her I didn't know anything about them. Son, because of a lie you told, your mother, your own mom, she may not live. Oh, Dad, I, I'm sorry. If she would just get well, I promise I'll never tell another lie. Never. I hope not, son. I hope you've learned your lesson. I have, Dad. And if I were you, son, I'd go to my room. And I'd get down on my knees and confess what I had done. I'd tell God how sorry I am. I'd tell him that I'll never tell another lie. And then I'd ask him to make Mother well again. And I'm sure he will. All right, Dad. It was one thing to promise to not tell any more lies, and quite another thing to keep that promise. It was awfully hard for Robbie, but he did it. For several days, he didn't tell a single lie. Then one morning, as his dad was about ready to go to work... Dad? Yes? I think I'll get some work to do so I can earn some money and get Mom some flowers for her sick room. May I? That's a good idea, son. Your mother loves flowers, especially roses. a little later that morning, Robbie kissed his mother on the cheek and started down the street in search of a job. Any kind of a job that would earn him a few dollars. He'd gone only a block when he met another boy about his own age. Hello. Hello. You're the new boy who just moved in the next block, aren't you? Yeah. What's your name? Robbie. What's yours? Fred. Do you play baseball? Sure, but I can't play now. I'm on my way to get a job. A job? Huh. Does your father make you work? No. I want to work. I want to buy Mom some flowers. Buy your mom flowers? Why spend good money on flowers? Mom is sick, and she loves flowers, especially roses. Say, I know where you can get some roses. Lots and lots of them. All you want. You do? And they won't cost you anything either. Really? Not a cent. Come on, I'll show you where you can get them. There, back of that high board fence is a whole garden of roses. Nothing but roses. Millions of them. I can't even see them from here. Oh, man, Korngorski doesn't want you or anyone to see them. Why? Because he's the meanest man in town, that's why. Oh. But I know how you can see them. How? See that tree over there by the fence? Uh-huh. We'll climb up it. Then we can see over the fence into the garden. Come on, that tree is easy to climb. I never saw so many roses. You're looking at the most famous garden in Centerville. Maybe in the whole world. It just doesn't seem that anyone who liked roses as well as Mr. Korngorski does would be so mean as he is. But he is. He's the meanest man in town. What does he do with so many roses? He sells them. That's the way he makes his living. Then how can I get them for nothing? I know how to get over the fence. I'll show you how. After dark. And you can help yourself. Take all the roses you can carry. Steal them? He's got so many he wouldn't miss them. That's not stealing. Yes, it is. And it's wrong to steal. I wouldn't... Oh! Hurt yourself? No, I guess not. For a minute there, I thought you were a garner. Breaking a limb and falling to the ground like that. Wait until I come down and we'll go over to the diamond and play ball with the fellas. I can't. I'm going to find some sort of job so I can earn enough money to buy Mom some flowers. Hey, there comes old man Korngorski around the corner of the fence. Let's beat it. Run? Why? He don't let boys climb his trees. Is that his tree we climb? Yeah. And just wait until he finds out you broke a limb. He'll beat you with that club he's got. Come on, let's vamoose. No, I'm going to stay here. You can if you want to, but not me. Come back here, boy. Come back here, knife. Oh, so you didn't run, eh? No. What's going on here? Who broke this limb? I, I did, sir. You did? Climbing my tree, eh? 
I don't allow boys to climb my trees. That's what Fred said, sir. He did, eh? Did he tell you who I am? Yes, sir. He said you're Mr. Korngorski, the meanest man in town. You and... knew uh, who I am, and yet you climbed my tree and broke a limb? I wanted to see your roses, sir. Why didn't you run like your friend did? Aren't you afraid of uh, uh, the meanest man in town? I... I am afraid, sir. <laughs> Follow me, boy. Yes, sir. You're wondering what sort of punishment I'm going to give you for breaking that limb, aren't you? I didn't mean to break it, Mr. Korngorski. Wasn't it punishment enough to stand there and face me when you wanted to run? Didn't it make you sweat to tell me the truth when a lie would have been easier? I... I used to tell lots of lies, mm. but I almost got Mom killed by a lie I told. So I promised God I wouldn't tell any more lies. Mm. And you're keeping your promise. Uh -huh. The truth always pays, son. Yes, sir. If all boys were truthful, they wouldn't need to be afraid of me. Why, I like boys. I'd open my gate and let them all inside. If they were honest enough to do me no mischief... But my roses are all I have for an income. And I must protect them with high walls and a closed gate. And uh, here we are, at the gate. What are you going to do, Mr. Korngorski? Do? <laughs> Why, I'm going to open the gate and let you go in my rose garden. There she is, boy. Go in and look around to your heart's content. Your roses are beautiful, sir. And when you get through looking around, come up to the shed. I've been looking for a dependable boy to carry my roses to the flower shop and do other odd jobs. And I found him. You. Uh, what's your name, son? Robbie, sir. And I could help you every day. I want to earn enough to buy a rose and take it to Mom's bedside. Well, is your mother sick, Robbie? Yes, sir. Very sick, because of that lie I told you about. And I want to give to the best mom in the whole world a rose every day, a rose from her son. One rose? Only one for the best mom in the whole world? Why not take her a dozen from both of us? A dozen every day, starting right now. You just go in there and help yourself. We'll talk about work and pay and such things after you deliver a dozen roses to your mom. <laughs> Mr. Korngorski? Uh, yes? You're not the meanest man in town. What? I think you're the nicest. Why, you... <laughs> This has been your story hour, building for a better tomorrow. This is Aunt Carol and Uncle Dan saying goodbye, goodbye everyone. everyone. See, See you again, again next time. time.